She must be really bored on her gap year. That's right, I am hoping to reach base camp of Mount Everest between March 1st and March 20th. First off, a quick side note, if you want to get your hands on the limited edition Mei Ying Chow merch, which is also raising money for Dementia UK, then please check the description box because there's only two days to go and there's also free worldwide shipping at the moment. So I thought I'd make a video explaining why I'm doing this, who I'm going with, what I'm doing there, my preparation for it, what I'm looking forward to, just to kind of give you an introduction. I will be vlogging this experience because it is a once in a lifetime opportunity and I will be also posting stories on my Instagram, my Snapchat and on Twitter. The vlogs might not go out on the days that I'm actually doing it because in the evenings I will probably want to relax and I also want to chat with people there. I don't want to be on my phone editing and stuff like that. The story of how this became a thing was I was gap year planning with one of my friends, Susie, who I'm going traveling to Asia with later on in the year. Susie actually originally came up with the idea to climb Mount Everest but then it turned out that the time that we'd be able to do it was during monsoon season. It was quite a spontaneous idea I must admit but when I had my mind set on it I knew that this was something that I wanted to accomplish and something I wanted to do my gap year. So I contacted a local Nepalese trekking guide company called iTrek Nepal because I realised I would be trekking this alone because Susie wouldn't be there and therefore I thought I'd prefer to have a guide who knows the area a bit better than I do and also has climbed it before. I'm quite aware there are a lot of dodgy trekking companies out there but I'd heard some really good reviews about iTrek Nepal and with their service you can get a Sherpa who will help carry some of the load up the mountain while I will be carrying all my camera gear, my first aid kit, my food um, and all my layers and stuff like that and my water. Rick who is the CEO of iTrek Nepal is such a great guy. I'm really sad that I won't be able to meet him when I'm out there or his daughters because they sound like a really lovely family. Nevertheless I'm so glad I contacted Rick because he's given me the wonderful opportunity to also interview Doma Sherpa. Now this is a little sneak peek of what is going to come but basically she is hoping to be the first woman Sherpa to summit Everest. That is correct, she is going to climb to the summit of Everest. I will also leave in the description box below the link for Doma's fundraising because of course it's very expensive to summit to Everest. You don't just have to have training but you need the right gear, you need visas and permits and all this kind of stuff. I also understand it's not just the financial hurdles that she's overcoming but also the stereotypical cultural norms against women. It's quite a big thing that she even paints her nails and wears high heels because in their culture a lot of the women are meant to stay at home and do housework and they're confined by their family and they don't really go out and get much education. I believe only 40% of Nepalese women are literate. If you do have the time to check out her fundraising campaign then please do check the description because I think it would make the world of difference. I think one of the most exciting things about this trip, apart from hopefully reaching Everest Base Camp, is going to be experiencing the local culture there. I'm very excited to see the buzzing capital of Kathmandu and then working my way up all the small villages and the towns and meeting the locals there and as well as that the other trekkers that will be going at the same time as me. So onto my preparation, I have to admit before booking my flights to Kathmandu I had never trekked before. <laughs> when I was younger our family used to go on really long 17 mile walks every weekend so I'm used to having a long walk we've always done long walks in our family also when I was younger I did a lot of ballet and meditation and they often recommend that you do things like jiu-jitsu and taekwondo because when you're going down hills you're not just going up you're going up and down a lot um, you tend to get more injuries and that's because people can be quite heavy footed as they go down and then you get a lot of pressure and tension and aches on your knees and ankles so I like to think that my parents have been preparing me for this for the past 18 years of my life but it's not just that for the past three or four months I've been doing some quite high intense cardio workouts so at least four times a week I go for at least one hour runs on those days and even in 50 mile per hour winds when we had the storm in Brighton I almost got blown off that cliff and then into the road of traffic it was probably one of the most scariest times but it was good resistance training also it's quite lucky I have my dog because I take her on four or five hour long walks and she loves it she has a lot of stamina so the idea is that you keep your heart rate as high as possible for as long as possible to increase the efficiency of your red blood cells so that when you're in the high altitudes and there's very low oxygen your body can cope at Everest Base Camp it's just below 50% oxygen levels AMS which is acute mountain sickness or also known as altitude sickness is the main killer I have to admit that's the thing I'm most scared about but I feel a lot of it is mental as well so I'm just making sure that I know I'm as prepared as I can be and um, I'll make it it's fine <laughs> 
Another thing I'm doing is called stair acclimatization, so it's as horrible as it sounds. It's basically running up and down five flights of stairs until your calf spaz and they hurt. Towards the end of January, I went up to the north of Wales for the first time ever. It was very exciting. It was to see one of my friends, Saskia, who fortunately, her whole family are very fit. They do like a good trek, a good hike, good walk, a bit of orienteering. So we were planning to go to Snowdonia, turned out that there was a blizzard so we couldn't go so we ended up going up a hill called Mo Mo Famai. I think that's how you pronounce it. It just reminds me of Mo Farah. It was a really nice chill trek and it was also nice to see the snow. That was very exciting. Basically the main aim of all my preparation is that when I get there I really just want to enjoy the trip rather than constantly being out of breath and just about making it up. I want to be there and be able to take everything in and not just be puffing and panting. So I'm hoping that I'm doing enough and it's working please. Another thing that I'm really looking forward to is finding these two bakeries that are apparently along the trek. I might just only be able to pop into one but preferably two. I've been reading loads of blogs and I've been watching other people's videos from when they climbed up Everest. I think I've seen about 20 different peoples and as well as that there are some beautiful mountains along the way. I think Lotzi and Abba de Blan are going to be my favourite. I've also heard about the local cuisine as you're going up the mountain which is apparently Dalbat so you eat that every day. Another thing if you know me you know I love sunsets and sunrises and I don't think you can be a sunset or a sunrise in the Himalayas. <laughs> Those sunrises are 100% worth a 3am start because I don't think I'm ever going to get this opportunity again and the Himalayas, I mean the Himalayas. I've also had a warning about the yak trains which could kill you so when you get a whole herd of yaks coming down just make sure to stick to the inside of the wall. I'm going to keep that in my brain, I don't want to fall off and plummet to my death. Another thing I have to remember is to drink at least 5 litres of water a day. I will be going to the toilet a lot and probably during the night but to stop AMS and to stay hydrated you need to drink a lot of water. Currently I've been banned from watching the film Everest, don't know why, don't want to question it, but over Christmas I watched a really nice motivational film called La Saint Jean. It's a French film and it's basically about how this guy summited Everest without any prior training apart from running up and down his flat building stairs. What's even more inspirational was that that was based on a true story so I'll just keep that in the back of my mind. If he can do it, so can I. Also in that film you see him calling up his local radio station and speaking to them every day and updating them on the progress. That's kind of what I'm going to be doing on my social media but as well as that I was actually on my local radio station today. So that's an update of what I'm going to be doing in March. Uh, I have pre-filmed some videos so they will be going up so you will hopefully be getting at least weekly videos from me while I'm out there. I have looked into some cards out there as there is wi-fi along the way but it can be quite expensive and of course as you get up the mountain it it gets it struggles a bit so i'm hopefully going to get some data so i will be able to still message you and reply back to your comments i hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to grab yourself one of the tops so that you can match me while i'm climbing everest subscribe for weekly videos on this channel and i will see you next week have a lovely day bye bye